Well, good morning, all. Appreciate you joining us for part two of our uh, look at uh, uh, Hemisphere 68. And Christopher is with us again this week, so he will, uh, of course, be watching and uh, letting me know all the mistakes I am about to make. But uh, again, appreciate <laughs> <You're> it. <great>. <laughs> No, I appreciate you again doing it, Chris, last uh, week. Uh, since he did so much of the historical background and everything, I'm not going to go into uh, that uh, sort of thing. We're going to go more and just uh, take a tour around and look at some pretty pictures and uh, try to uh, enjoy it. So let me do the usual here as I think about it, Don. I'm going to promote you to the exalted rank of doorkeeper. Gladly accept. There you go. And I'm going to throw everybody on mute here. If anything does come up that's urgent, uh, just uh, you know, yell, uh, send Carol a note, and she can come down the hall. Uh, speaking of Carol, I just warn everybody: the doorbell is going to ring. Carol is going to jump up and run to the door to try to give the uh, mail lady the mail, but the dogs are going to bark, and it's going to be a, a business as usual at the Cotter Cotter residence. So appreciate everybody joining. Hemisphere uh, again, as if you were here for Chris's talk last week. It's one of the lesser known World's Fairs, at least for those of us on the East Coast. They didn't do much in a way of uh, publicizing it, uh, advertising it. And uh, we had been through a lot of World's Fairs at that point in time. We had, had two years of the uh, New York World's Fair followed uh, pretty closely by Expo 67. So I think they probably figured people on the East Coast are World's Fair it out. And it's too bad because uh, it, it probably could have brought more people in. My brother, Jerry, actually moved to San Antonio a number of years ago. And when he got there, he had never even heard that there had been a World's Fair uh, before he got there and heard about Hemisphere because, again, it just never came up on anything on the East Coast. So let me share the screen here. I'm going to go and uh, pull up a uh, picture here. Well, that was the other thing that made last week so much fun. Uh, I, I Christopher had done the talk last week, so I had not uh, had to share my screen. When I got on the phone uh, to do the thing with the museum with Disney, it turned out I had installed uh, during the week a codec on the computer, which uh, totally screwed up video and audio. And I had to go and rebuild my Windows system to be able to share things. So anyway, if people, uh, do you see a, a picture of artwork right here now, theater and river court? Great. The very first set of slides we're looking at were the official slides that were sold by uh, Plastichrome for the uh, souvenir slides of the fair. Just like with the, the 64 World's Fair, uh, the place isn't built, so you don't have a lot of pictures to take, but when the public walks in the door on day one, you want to start being able to sell your uh, advertising you know, or souvenirs to them. So what do you do? You go with concept artwork. And we saw some of the pictures uh, last week that Christopher showed us, uh, the mural up here on top of the, the building. We're going to see more of these in uh, real life coming up. But I thought people might enjoy a look at how the, uh, the artwork was showing it. They were able to go and throw some things in, like Calypso, because Calypso had been used at the 62 World's Fair. So if you take a picture of the 62 World's Fair and just throw it into the Expo 60 uh, or Hemisphere 68, thing, who's going to know the difference? Calypso is Calypso, right? They used a lot of the model work. Here we see the uh, Bell System Pavilion. Uh, next week, Rob Bianco was talking about uh, building models, so he may particularly enjoy oh, this. have the two black things on either side? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, let me, uh, Carol's mentioned that there's the two black bars on either side. Why is it not zoomed in? Uh, I can't answer that. She can't answer that. Okay, hang on here one second. I don't know why he's doing that. We'll just live with the black bars right now. The convention zillion, they cut, uh, Zoom quit unexpectedly. Hang on, uh, I hope my Zoom pro Interesting, oh, everybody but Bill up there. Oh, Billy, oh, there you are. Didn't go on screen for a minute. Bill's back, but he's on mute. You make him wave. And... Yeah. You're How are you, Bill? Bill? There you go. <laughs> OK. Uh, I am being censored by myself. So hopefully this all works. Uh, again, I don't know what went wrong. More artwork. Uh, I don't have any idea whatsoever what the black squares up in the sky are supposed to represent, but that's how the slide was sold. 
You're uh, not sharing I, right not now. Sharing yet. Yeah. Not sharing. Okay. It's oh. you. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, share screen. Okay. We got uh, let's see. We keep the fingers crossed here. Yay! Okay. So again, hey, star. All right. Yeah, what these little black squares are up there, that's the way the picture was sold, and I have no idea what it's supposed to be. Maybe there are birds doing something I've seen, and they, they uh, <laughs> and again, we're hopping through the international area, uh, lovely art uh, models that they did and artwork that they did. Lots of little people, give some size context to our models. But again, if you were there for the fair, it, during the, the fair, they introduced a number of live action, uh, you know, real photos. But for the majority of the photos for Hemisphere 68, the souvenir ones, they, uh, they went with artwork. This artwork was also used uh, in things like uh, postcards uh, for the fair. Because again, when you first got to the fair and you wanted to buy a postcard, uh, there was, uh, you know, just the, uh, the concept artwork. In some cases here, like you have the Los Voladores, the ones that appeared at Pepsi, this obviously not taken at Hemisphere 68 because there's no mountains like that in San Antonio that I'm aware of. So they, they cheated with a few odds and ends. The U.S. Convoluence Theater, now the courthouse. And we're going to be seeing more of these in live action. I always got a kick out of this one. The uh, uh, mini monorail looks real space age and Looks like it's zipping along. The real one was a little more snub nosed. Some of the existing buildings on site that they uh, later repurposed for use in Hemisphere, Humble uh, Oil took over this one. Our first real picture outside the, the grounds, that's the headquarters building used to run the, uh, the, uh, the fair during the time. The US exhibit. Food around the world, everybody getting hungry, right? This was their version of the, the brass rails, uh, eye-catching to, to throw you in. Amusement ride area. The Mormon pavilion. And we're still looking at models. It looks pretty realistic, uh, but it's a model. Again, the artwork, everybody's always happy and having fun and a good time. And they did when they went to Hemisphere. It was a successful operation. GE, we saw that last week, as Christopher mentioned, designed by local architectures. Humble Oil, a little closer look at that. Again, you can go with the uh, picture that was used at a different fair. You had the puppets uh, throw it in there because they're going to be doing pretty much the same show, looking the same. One of the two IBM pavilions. All sorts of rides on, on Fiesta Island. This one I got a kick out of, the Coca-Cola puppet show. Uh, I don't know how realistic this uh, came down to what the actual show was, but Looks like something out of the world of Sid and Marty Croft. Mm -hmm. And we get into the US pavilion. Now we're, the fair is actually open, so we can actually use uh, real pictures of things. Uh, Golden Garter, there was talk last week about the fellow that would go outside the US pavilion and try to lure people into the Golden Garter for some overpriced beer and snacks. <laughs> Woman's Pavilion still there. Mini monorail going past the convention center. Calypso this time at actually at Hemisphere. General Motors. Here's the Frito-Lay area. The uh, uh, Voladores go up the pole there and did the act that we were familiar with from the uh, 64 World's Fair spinning wildly down to the ground. Very popular show at Hemisphere. And IBM, you could go over and use the computer and uh, we'll see that loom we talked about last week. And again, one of the elevated walkways put in, the mini monorail going by. This area for all the amusement rides was called the Fiesta Island. 
They were packed in pretty tight, uh, so they made a good use of the area. The puppet show looks pretty much like it would have looked right at the uh, 64 World's Fair. They uh, didn't go out of their way for architecture. William Cameron Fountain looking pretty spectacular outside the Italy Pavilion. And here's a nice overhead view, uh, taking a helicopter and airplane going by. We see the Tower of the Americas, and it, it shows, I think, it's a good uh, angle here, just how spectacular the design of that was. The uh, you know amazingly tall uh, structure, and then the top house up at the top. Uh, it, didn't have the, the buttresses of the legs that come out to uh, support the Space Needle. So as Christopher mentioned, it has to go way down in the ground for support. Thing that people that live in the area might appreciate the uh, parking lot, you can see all the cars out there and it looks like it goes way, way off to the right. Well, it does because that was a highway being built and the highway wasn't gonna be finished in time. So let's just take the highway and use that as a, uh, as a parking lot. So again, you can see, you know, it, it, now that you know it, you can look and see, oh yeah, that's gonna be a, an interstate uh, going off to the right of the diagonal. But uh, during hemisphere, we're gonna use it for, for parking. Water ski shows, uh, motorboats jumping over ramps and everything. Again, all of this was man-made lagoon. Somebody asked me on uh, Facebook yesterday, were we gonna show any pictures of the Bon Roll Skyway? And I said, oh yes, but of course, because back at this point in time, I think it was absolutely mandatory if you were gonna have a World's Fair, you must have a monorail and you must have a Skyway. And just about every one of them did to great advantage. The mini monorail, again, we talked about the accident last week. I'll be showing some pictures of, of that. Uh, for Expo 67, they had used it as a computerized uh, control. Uh, and for this one, they, uh, they, they decided to put a person in it. And unfortunately, the person uh, ended up having a, an accident there. Hey, Don, if you're uh, sitting there and you can see all the attendees, if you could just do a mute all for everybody, I, I'd appreciate it. If I see that you mute me, I will. So again, the US uh, Theater, Fountain, they did the same thing for the a lot of the shops and everything in the back that they had previously. You're muted, Bill. Sorry, uh, yeah, he went down in the mute all. What's that? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I I mute I did the mute all and got you. It's trying to. Okay, I unmuted. We should be there. Okay. Again, they went for the idea here, if I can put shops and everything in the back in a prefab building, give everybody, uh, you, you, if you're going to put a shop in for Hong Kong or Morocco or whatever, you don't need to go to all the effort to build your own pavilion. We can do what we did at uh, the 62 World's Fair, produce a generic thing, and you could just go and change the, uh, the front view of it. And just the general walkway here. Kind of a nice shot showing uh, the the motion out on the lake and all the kids and everything by down at the, the base and off to the left they're just getting ready to pick up some water skiers. Mural mentioned up there on the, the theater. The Pearl Pavilion, there was lots of, being in Texas, as you can imagine, there's lots of opportunity to get a nice ice cold beverage. A night view of Hemisphere. Again, that top house is an amazing structure when you consider built at the ground and raised all the way up, up to the top. And Christopher talked about the problem they had in the windstorm uh, last week. I can imagine until the final bolt was driven in and it was uh, kept nice and secure, there were probably a lot of very nervous people. Some sculptures outside of Canada. Going over to Ford, we have a marching band going uh, past here, but the Ford Pavilion, much, much smaller than we had seen at the uh, 64 World's Fair. They ended up using a couple of the elements uh, added and we'll see the, uh, the, uh, the band and stuff inside. Most of the displays at Ford were uh, outside, uh, you know, the newer cars. They had a couple concept cars, but more of uh, some of the higher end things that you go and buy in you know, next year's model. So that was the end of the souvenir slides. So let me jump over here and I will start going into some of the uh, actual sets. This next one uh, was uh, set 
the slides I mentioned of previous uh, things by a, a guy named Arps. Uh, he was a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy, and he sold slides under the name of Rolock, color spelled backwards. And he did an exceptional job on his slides of uh, capturing some of the, uh, the views and images. So we're going to be uh, visiting Mr. Arp's recollection of the fair here. This was a set of slides, and he actually did a very nice uh, title slide. And if we get a nice view off the site. There is the hotel that uh, was, was built for it uh, and uh, the, the fair site off in the background. And you can see how the city of San Antonio was right up to the borders of the fair, just like with uh, Expo uh, 62 Seattle, uh, you know, you're taking an area that was, we talked last week about uh, urban renewal, uh, tearing things down, displacing people. Unfortunately, uh, if you're going to put it in the middle of an existing city and you're not going to use a rail yard or a, uh, uh, you know, something like that, you're going to have to move some people around. So unfortunately that was done, uh, you know, worked out great for the people that went to Hemisphere. It didn't work out so great for the people that uh, had lived there beforehand, but uh, it uh, was part of, part of the price of progress, I guess. The same thing happens if you need to put a freeway through town or other odds and ends. We're getting some nice aerial views. You may have noticed in a bunch of these uh, are trucks and things like that. Some of them were shot very, very early in the morning. And a couple of them were also shot just before the uh, uh, event opened as they were doing the final construction. Uh, Christopher mentioned how attendance didn't come out quite as predicted, uh, but you can also see here, oh, there's the mail call. Okay. Pavlov sure knew what he was talking about with dogs, right? So I apologize again for barking. Uh, you can see down below quite a crowd and um, <laughs> Nobody is ever going to break into this house undetected, especially when they ring the doorbell in advance. Anyway, you can see some of the good sized crowds that have come into the uh, enjoy the day at Hemisphere. The flag plaza, these are all the nations that were exhibiting at Hemisphere. Yeah. Uh. Nice view of Tower of the Americas. Somebody asked last week if we would get a picture of the elevator, and there's one of them going up uh, directly above us. And this is what you'd see if you went uh, up to the top. You can look out and see uh, uh, here. Uh, and this was pretty interesting. You have St. Joseph's Church, and uh, they wanted to build a giant department store around it, and the church didn't want to move. And folks in New York may appreciate it. If you remember in Queens, the lady that refused to sell her house, and I think they were building it was an A and S or a, uh, Gimbel's or some department store, went all the way around this lady's house. She just would not sell out. Well, here you had a, a, a historically important church. They were not going to tear it down. So you end up being completely surrounded by a giant uh, apartment store and a more distant view. But this shows again right up to the uh, edge of uh, Expo. Uh, I keep saying Expo, sorry, right up to the edge of Hemisphere. Uh, the city is right out there. You can also imagine how many people that own property were very glad to uh, have cars coming into the city, because look at all the cars and all those parking lots, which were uh, just off the, the site. Nice view looking down at the water ski show here and uh, people gathering around. The canal that goes through here, uh, Christopher mentioned some of that last week. We'll see more pictures of the boats, but this was a great way for people to re relax, get off their feet for a little while, but also take a nice tour all the way around the, uh, the hemisphere site. You can also see the track of the mini monorail running around. Down below Fiesta Island, uh, the uh, uh, building up on the top, the Texas Pavilion still there. And another closer view of that. It was really uh, fun when I went there with Christopher. He gave uh, Carol and me and uh, our friends that live in Texas some a tour there. If you've seen all these things, you think you know where things are, but when you're actually walking down that walkway to the building, it's a real kick to, uh, to you know, be able to, to take your photos and put them in place and perspective. Los Voladores, they're almost back down to the ground spinning around. You can see again, huge crowds, just like at the Mexico Pavilion at the 64, 65 World's Fair, 
everybody came to watch it, a free show, and it, it's pretty spectacular. I still remember as a kid and uh, seeing them all spin around and come down and thinking, thank God I don't have to do that for a living. The brand new Spanking Convention Center in the arena and theater. Again, what was interesting was they didn't clear everything on the site. They left some of the buildings in place and they're still there today. So you had some of the older pavilions or older buildings repurposed as pavilions. And right behind it, you have the new modular constructed hotel. So a real uh, contrast in old San Antonio and brand spanking new San Antonio. Felipe, uh, the Philippines Pavilion, uh, they had a restaurant. Again, one of the existing buildings uh, repurposed. Ball staff, more place to go get a beer. The elevated walkways were really a clever idea. Unfortunately, gone now. But uh, you could then, if you have a site, you only have so many acres, uh, how do I double the use of it? Well, you make it a double decker. I can have the walkways get to a real convenient way to get you from point A to point B. But down below, I can stick shops, I can stick restrooms, I can do all sorts of things. So by coming up with an elevated site plan, I can, uh, you know, not double because the whole site wasn't uh, double deckered but I can uh, you know, double decker it and double the use of some parts of the site. So it was great. It also meant that if you wanted to get from point A to B, you didn't have to worry about people on lines or shops or shows or anything because the walkways were pretty well open and uh, just, a, 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 just there for transit, not for anything else. The mural up there at the top, I've got some other pictures that show the colors a bit more uh, brilliantly. Magic of People Pavilion. Uh, some of these things are interesting that you wonder uh, if somebody saw this, if they'd have any idea what it is. Uh, there's not a lot of signage to tell you. Some cases signage is added later on to try to attract people in. Other times word of mouth became it. Uh, but it's, it's the sort of thing, if you're gonna build it and wanna have people come in, you might just wanna tell them what it is and why they wanna come inside. Canal view, and again, the skyway overhead. We saw the conceptual artwork before of one of the food courts. There were two of these like this, and it was really great. You can get a whole variety of things. Again, being in Texas is not so surprising. You could go to uh, Tommy's Barbecue off to the uh, left, or over to the right, what do we have but a barbecue restaurant. So uh, uh, in the back, you can also get a chili dog or other things. So uh, there was no breakout food item that I know of at Hemisphere 68. There was no Belgian waffle, or uh, like in uh, New Orleans, we had the uh, corn chips in a bag and you know stuff uh, poured over it. Uh, if there was anything that came out of Hemisphere, I'm not aware of it. But if you wanted barbecue and chili dogs, you were all set. Again, the Skyway going overhead. The uh, thing in the background was called Project Y, uh, sort of a bland looking building. And here's one of the boats, a uh, great way to get around. Uh, you can see that it's on a rail, that the track is going down below. So the fellow was able to pretty much uh, just, you know, make sure he went around and hit another boat in front of him, but they could give you a live uh, narration of what you were seeing as you uh, took the tour around. You have hey, yes. Sorry to break in, sir. We've had a request that uh, you go full screen. Apparently people are saying you're not at full screen. Actually, it looks full to me. Ah, uh, I can try it, but I, I, I tell you, I'm going to leave it the way it is. So okay. I'm seeing the crash again. I had tried to go to full screen and it crashed out on me. So I'm still <laughs> apparently having a video driver. I'm, hopefully it's people should be seeing a fairly large image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just you, wanted to relay the request, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if you're seeing like the border and the control up at the, uh, the top. But when I did try to go to full screen, it, it crashed out on me, and I don't want to have that happen again. So uh, I will stay away from that. Uh, so the U.S. Pavilion, a uh, big crowd in front of that. I don't know uh, if somebody was making a speech or doing something important that particular day. Actually, Bill, uh, actually, Bill that, I'm willing to bet you that was taken on June the 6th of 1968, which was the day after Bobby Kennedy was shot. That's why the flags are at half mast. And you got a lot of folks circling around the U.S. Pavilion looking for information. Thank you, appreciate it. That, that's good to know. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Here's the birds that uh, Christopher showed us last week. A different uh, head-on view of them, and he said some of them are supposedly still down in the basement. 
And we go inside the lobby of the U.S. Pavilion. Uh, again, huge, uh, huge area here. Uh, I can imagine repurposing in a courthouse was quite a challenge. I particularly like this picture because it shows us the hostess costumes. And again, 1968, uh, you know, things are getting uh, the mod world, bright colors and everything. And some of the costumes that we'll see for the hostesses uh, and some of the other pavilions were, were pretty neat. Just like uh, they were really well designed and uh, uh, well done for Expo 67, I thought they did a, a great job with the, uh, uh, the hostess outfits for, for Hemisphere. And we're going into the U.S. Pavilion, big, you know, famous uh, milestones, Christopher Columbus coming over and finding a new world and Walter Raleigh finding a new uh, uh, civilization, Ponce de Leon and his discoveries down in Florida, all sorts of different banners. A little bit of comedy in here, talking about how St. Augustine was discovered. Here comes Ponce de Leon and, and uh, he's getting a very warm welcome. Going out here to... Uh, the Wild West, we had the Pony Express. This is all jumping over to Bolivian Indians. Uh, again, a mass in costumes. Again, they jumped all over the place in these things. Costumes that we had seen before at the Belgian uh, the village at the 64 fair. This one's on a mannequin. They didn't come out and do the same big shows, but one of the uh, dancers with the big feathered headdress and the lanterns that they carried. Over in Belgium, we get a good example of diamond cutting. I always wondered how much they actually did diamond cutting. The, you know, I, I would think it takes a lot of concentration, but if you have a whole bunch of people standing around, you wonder how much noise and everything they make. So I don't imagine they were recutting the Hope Diamond or anything of any super value, but they, it's a big, uh, big business over there and they were saluting it. Over to Canada, they had a number of boats outside the Canada Pavilion anchored out there. You can see there's actually a boat ramp off to the left. It looks like somebody with a, a little uh, uh, boat or some wheel device of some kind, maybe an amphibious car looks like he's pushing up. Inside of Canada, flags uh, of the different provinces and the speaker's mace on loan in the glass case. Again, I, I just love the, uh, the costumes for the, uh, uh, the hostesses, very modern, uh, a big change from what things were wearing in the past with floral prints and that things were very angular, stark and brightly colored. We're over to China, a Chinese living room. What was nice about this was they were displaying things unlike we saw in other Chinese pavilions at uh, say uh, the New Orleans World's Fair or the uh, one in uh, Knoxville, uh, the China Pavilion usually had a price tag on all the design elements here. Things were on display, not on sale. Over to Columbia, artwork brought in, and uh, again, two hostesses adorning it. Germany had uh, a pavilion talking about, uh, the, you know, what was the thought of the typical German sitting there, you know, uh, with their, their umpa bands and uh, playing tubas and drinking beer. Well, it was more than that. Uh, we're a very industrial nation. Remember at this time, this is all West Germany. So, uh, you know, any maps of the country are going to be skewed to what we have today. But talking about the, the Berlin cut off from the rest of uh, Germany and how it's succeeding on its own. Hostess is from Honduras. We're going to go inside a uh, pavilion here and we're going to see uh, people coming over and settling the new world again. This whole thing was about the confluence of different nations and how everybody came together. So talking about how the different people came from uh, different areas and settled the new world and uh, migrated between the countries was a big part of it. Discovery of the new world. Japan, again, brightly colored costumes. And Japan was another one that would give us an, oh, sorry, we're actually Korea this time. But they would give us examples of how uh, the traditional uh, elements look. So we see the, uh, the costumes here, the lacquer furniture, that sort of thing. But what's in the background? A brand new transistor radio showing that uh, all these countries were coming out of their old world into the new world and having a successful blend of the two. There were, again, Christopher told us last week, and uh, I forget the number of countries that uh, exhibited, but 
again, we build a pavilion, we'll give you a, a, a kind of a square front and you are free to decorate it and draw people in on your own to, uh, to make it attractive, just like they had done on the 62 World's Fair. So here you can put some, uh, you know, carved statues outside, a nice mural. Uh, and if you came walking up, I think there's enough there that you might want to go in and see what's, uh, what's featured inside. And here's part of what you would have found inside. Uh, costumes, native costumes, lots of displays of the, uh, uh, you know, artwork and uh, native crafts, things that were available. Outside, you had a mariachi band. Uh, this would have looked very familiar, a stage jutting out in the water. Uh, they had just had that sort of stage at Expo 67. So let's go and put one of them in at Hemisphere 68. And we can go out and, and entertain. We saw this before. Uh, we saw in Guatemala, they had a piece of artwork. Now they have the same sort of thing. We have an Olmec head. This, I think, was bigger than the Olmec head that was at the 64 World's Fair. Very ornate uh, organ, uh, uh, not organ, church altar rather. And I, uh, I, this may have been the same one that was at the 64 fair. It's the uh, Shrine of St. Joseph. Off to the Spanish pavilion, not quite as ornate as 64. This one I got a kick out of. It's the giant mechanical bird at the Switzerland pavilion. He shows up in a number of pictures. Uh, there, you'd almost think that it was a, a Kodak picture spot from the number of visitors that went and got pictures of the mechanical bird. And we're ending up uh, with the last of the, uh, the Rolox slides. We're over, saw, had the Lone Star Hall of Texas history. And come on in, you can have a beer. And inside, you would get the dioramas uh, such as this one. LaSalle is there. He's uh, proclaiming that France now uh, is the rightful owner of Texas. That, of course, was not quite agreed to by the residents of Texas or other nations that also had their eyes on it. So we're going to bring some Christianity in. We have the Spanish uh, uh, warrior off to the left here. Pirates operated off the coast. We have Jim Bowie off to the right. And of course, then we have to have uh, the Alamo. Uh, this is Davy Crockett. He looked to me at first glance to be looking more like John Wayne, but he's getting ready to load, load up old Betsy and protect the, uh, the Alamo. Sam Houston, president of the Republic of Texas. So uh, again, this was again the Hall of Texas history. Uh, not, not, I mean, not the big one that's there today, but this is inside the Lone Star, I believe. So, and oh, we, we can't show the lawyers this one. Somebody's getting scalped. So. Uh, the soldiers are here. We have Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. And we're back outside. Uh, Kodak, again, one of the existing pavilions still there today without the signage, uh, the Skyway overhead. And this one I thought was nice. Uh, this is right outside of Kodak. So they have some pictures out there to encourage you to take more of your own. Uh, but it kind of gives you a nice view of just how busy Hemisphere was, a very small area, but we have a boat going by, you got the overhead uh, monorail track, you got uh, uh, all sorts of people, pavilions, lots of things going on. View inside the women's pavilion, not an awful lot of uh, candid pictures inside the pavilions from back then because they had the same issue that uh, we've talked about at other world's fairs. The film required an awful lot of light. People generally didn't want to carry a tripod around. Luckily, uh, uh, Mr. Arps did carry a tripod around and he captured some nice views. Coca-Cola. There's the Ford Pavilion looking down. The quadricycle had been a replica built for the 64 World's Fair, moved over here. And they did have some concept cars inside. Oh, this is actually General Motors. So uh, you can see a couple concept cars. They're, red one and the blue one. I don't recall ever seeing this particular car at another fair. It uh, looks like it'd be a pretty powerful little uh, rocket though going down the street, doesn't it? We talked about the loom last week. Here's a, a view of it. I have another uh, view closer up, but this was the uh, idea that the computer could control the loom, uh, the uh, people with the light pens. Remember when light pens were going to be the big thing? We were all going to have this uh, pen on the end of a cable and we could type on our uh, computer screen and, and use that for wave input. But here is the, uh, this, uh, 
uh, loom that we saw being brought in in uh, Christopher's picture last week and a demonstration underway. Over to the bell system, you could pick up the phone and you could talk to the Disney characters. So you had uh, fun with that. They also had examples, and I don't remember if the picture is going to pop up here, of the picture phone exhibit, and you could talk to people at it at uh, Disneyland. So another view of uh, Bell system. Tower of the America at night. I wouldn't want the job of changing those light bulbs. But a nice nighttime view of San Antonio to up from the top at the fair. We've seen these views before, but they take on a different look at night. Canada again, whatever that little thing that looked like an amphibious vehicle is still in there next to the ramp. The Texas Pavilion. Back to the Voladores and the Mexico Pavilion. And these shows were done several times a day, uh, again, to huge, uh, huge crowds. Hopefully they didn't uh, go all the way through in this one. If you can see the caption, it's the chief's daughter prepares for the supreme sacrifice. Again, very mod. Look at the uh, uh, costumes here. I mean, that that's one heck of a combination of colors there. But you know, again, the 60s, you had to have your mod hat and everything. So this is uh, labeled as the monorail hostesses. We dance, uh, jump inside the Golden Garter. And dance hall costumes on the outside for the gay 90s. This is a sculpture, kinetic sculpture, water coming down, things would flutter around. Uh, you could sit outside there. If you see in the background, there's little control panels. Uh, I don't remember if you, they were charged for it or not. I'm trying to remember what I read about it, but you could uh, turn a dial, move a lever, and things would turn around, and you could try to use your water jets to make other things happen next to you. So uh, interactive sculpture there. So that's the end of uh, Mr. Rolock uh, films, and Mr. Arp films. We're going to jump in now to uh, pictures. So we can actually, sometimes it's really nice. You can pick the exact date things were taken. So we're going to see how this looked on uh, September 28th, 1968. So the golf tour ride, this was a miniature uh, kitty ride that you could go around. But golf would also uh, give you brochures, maps, uh, not just for Expo, but around there. And if you were going to drive back home, you could get a map that would conveniently show all the golf stations between where you were and where you were going. Pavilion here is called Alive. Uh, I don't remember the details on that. Maybe when we get to the Q&A, Christopher can fill us in on that a bit. The Mormon Pavilion, Man's Search for Happiness. Uh, we see the Angel Maroney uh, partially blocked by the uh, monorail beam. Back over to Humble Pavilion, you could go in for their hospitality, get out of the uh, sometimes often warm uh, air and go inside, enjoy yourself. RCA, those cubes talked about the RCA businesses and where they were located around the world. Uh, you know, again, RCA was very popular for color television, but they were also back in 1968 trying to become a big player in the computer field. Uh, so that uh, they had a whole bit of uh, display on what computers did. You could sit at a terminal, type, and get things done. Ticket booth off to the side and the main gate walking in. There were uh, couple gates into the fair. And this is sort of, sort of view you get when you first walked in. You see the bell system. Off to the back here, Ford. Again, remember, these are all amateur slides right now. So I always find uh, interesting on the slides, thinking you had 12, 20, maybe 24 pictures in a roll. What's going to be important to you? And uh, what do you get? And it, it shows how successful at times people, the designers of the pavilions were that People thought this was eye-catching and interesting enough that they wanted to get a picture, take it back, and show the folks back home. Governor John Connolly was in town this particular day, and he's giving an award to somebody over at the uh, uh, Canada Pavilion. So again, we could date it and uh, know exactly who was where and what they were doing. Tram down below. Um, it was interesting. I put up the picture of the tram as a sample uh, picture yesterday, and somebody said, why does it have uh, 
you know, can Canadian license plates. And that, isn't that the Expo 67 symbol on it? And yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> Expo 67 is supposed to run six months. They decided at the end of it, we need to sell some of the stuff off. So they started selling things like the trams. Well, they then said, oh, we're going to actually bring Expo 67 back for uh, Man in His World in 1968. Uh, what are we going to do? We've sold the trams to San Antonio. So they actually had to go and get trams from other places, uh, other theme parks and uh, uh, bus routes and that in Canada to uh, backfill because the uh, uh, Expo 67 trams were running around Hemisphere. And uh, so it was good, good eye catch for the fellow that spotted the uh, Canadian license plates on it. Humble Pavilion again. There were a few states that had exhibits in uh, Hemisphere. Again, uh, many of the states did not, uh, particularly on the East Coast, it had not been heavily promoted. So we don't see a, a big New York or New Jersey Pavilion. But some places like the state of Arkansas, so I guess we're close enough down south. We can get people that are traveling across the southern part of the United States. Maybe they'd like to learn more about Arkansas. Here's the IBM Lakeside Pavilion. We'll see more of IBM coming up. Outside view of the area. I imagine the streets are a little more congested today. German Pavilion, we saw an inside shot before. Here's what it looked like on the outside. The Confluence Theater. And again, it's, it's interesting. What do people decide to take pictures of? Maybe this guy was in the golf cart business, but he, he managed to capture two of these little service carts, which are used by the Hemisphere staff. And we get to see going over to the water ski show. Very popular attraction. It was, again, all done for free. Uh, you could get seating up in the bleachers. And I think they might have charged for the bleachers. But you could also see it from all around on the outside without uh, any, any particular problem. Just a close up view of the uh, elevator track going up the tower, uh, the column there up to the Tower of the Americas. Old Frontier Steakhouse, we can go and get another Texas size and Texas styled meal, meal off to the back. The Schultz House, another hospitality house. Uh, you can see we're getting down uh, near the end of hemisphere. Again, this is in September. So we're now saying, uh oh, we got a few extra souvenirs we're overstocked with. It's time that we better have some sales and start clearing this stuff out. Some of the sculptures and things were on display there. Nice view here again, showing the elevated walkways and how successful they were in getting people from point A to B uh, and not making them interfere with the people that wanted to do the things down on the ground. Texas cultures. In the background, you have the magic and people show, uh, the monorail going up overhead. Nice line waiting for it. So didn't have a lot of signage as I mentioned earlier, but people were lined up because again, word of mouth got out on what was successful. And if you went to it once and you had neighbors come from, uh, or friends come from out of town, you knew where to take them. And water ski. Sid and Marty Croft show in the background. Press Center, not the most uh, uh, attractive of buildings, but uh, it was uh, very busy for the, uh, the folks going in. And uh, what do they have outside, of course? But you could buy newspapers. General Motors, nice, uh, nice angular building there with some eye-catching appeal. Obviously, the fellow that took these was enamored by the, the tower. Governor Connolly again. I try generally to put the pictures in order if I can tell that they're numbered, but some cases they don't have uh, any numbers on the slide. So we'll jump from General uh, Governor Connolly over to something else and back to the, him later on. France, arrow, come inside. It kind of makes a, a bold statement. And not, you know, to me, again, if I was going to design this, I'd have some sort of eye catching graphics rather than just a giant blank wall. But this was a style that was popular back in, in the 68 area, as I mentioned, angular lines, bright contrasting uh, costumes for the uh, hostesses, and, uh, you know, the signage and everything. This was a particular 
uh, look and style that they, they went with. Lots of people going by Italy. We can start seeing people have changed their dress style from the uh, uh, 64 World's Fair. Uh, and it's Texas. People are more laid back in Texas. But uh, you don't see very many uh, suits. There is an older gentleman over here wearing a tie. Uh, there's a couple of people wearing uh, fedoras. I was actually surprised how few people were wearing cowboy hats. Uh, uh, very few of them show up in these shots. Again, looking at from the outside, there was the administration building we saw earlier in a night view. Standing down at the bottom, this whole area has changed quite a bit for going into the tower today, but you could go and buy your tickets to go up to the uh, elevator, just like at uh, the 62 World's Fair. You could go up just for the view, or you could go up for a meal. Woman's Pavilion there today. Oh, there's a cowboy hat in the, in the dead center, so somebody's going in with one. But again, dress styles are starting to relax. We're seeing more shorts and jeans and less uh, less women. I don't, I don't know if I've seen too many pictures in these of uh, women in high heels. They were, I think, uh, getting more into sensible shoes and that sort of thing. I think for all of us to collect things, wouldn't it be nice to be able to just zap back here for a moment? It's the end of hemisphere, things are on sale. Look at all those great souvenirs that are, are just waiting to be taken home and put into somebody's uh, collection. Outside, big long lines. Uh, again, just like with this New York World's Fair, attendance had been low and then people start realizing, oh, this thing is gonna be closing. If I'm gonna go see it, I better uh, see it now. So there was a, a swell in the attendance rate for the end of it. I've got quite a collection of the Hemisphere postcards. I've got uh, most of them on my site already. I've got a few I've still got to scan. But I've, I've zoomed on, on these racks trying to figure out which ones are here that I, uh, I don't have. This lady with the hand to her head looks like, oh my goodness, you know, which, which one do I have and which one I don't? That's why you need to make a World's Fair postcard checklist. And we'll keep hopping around again, back down to the souvenir stand. You can see they had uh, little strollers. Uh, it's off to the side here. In New York, we had little Corvettes that you could push the kids around. Well, in Texas, we went to a different thing. We have little trains that you could push the kids around. I don't know if any of these have survived. I've never seen one in anybody's collection or pictures post fair, but uh, that was a, a kind of neat thing. Put your kid in a little train and push them around. Christopher mentioned this last week, a uh, theater that would uh, drive around, uh, pop up in different sites uh, on it, the Rainbow Theater, and get puppet shows. Uh, kid up on dad's shoulders was getting a particularly good, good view of it. Humble shows up quite a bit. Big sale, come and get it, final days. Oh, no, 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 dog, I'm not talking to you. Stop barking. She's sitting in my lap here when I... So come and get it. She's thinking somebody's at the door. So you know, it's okay. It's okay. So again, final day is coming along. The crowds are picking up. We're just hopping through some of these. Oh, and if you're in town, you have to go and visit the Alamo. So at the end of the roll, he had a couple of pictures going over there. And downtown San Antonio, the post office and courthouse and Big road sign. Be interesting to see what this uh, intersection looked like today if they still have a sign like that for the Alamo. And there's the Hilton Hotel again, built all modular and those things all stacked up there. And I think we're just about done with his stuff there. So let me get in here real quick, because uh, I know we're going to run out of time. Let me hop down here to, uh, let's see, September 15th, 1968. People asked about it. So uh, unfortunately, there was the wreckage of the, uh, the mini monorail. Uh, the story was out. Again, we talked a little bit about last week where the two trains ran into each other. And, and you figure, how does a train run into each other if the guy is paying any attention whatsoever? One story, as Christopher mentioned, was that, oh, a tire blew out and the, uh, the brakes failed. Well, again, you shouldn't have gotten pretty close to the guy at any point in time. As I remember at Disney, we did have some problems with the modern rails did crash 
oh, the brake failure. But there was also the story that was widely publicized at the time that uh, the guy was reading a comic book and just didn't look up and he rear-ended somebody. So the monorail crashed. You can see the one up on the top uh, the, uh, fell down to the ground, unfortunately fell into a, uh, uh, another area of flower bed and lagoon that we'll see over here and a woman was killed. But you can see quite a bit of the uh, wreckage here. Um, one that got hit down below, we'll see more of the flowers all crushed down in, in the, the, the little fountain area. So in this particular shot, they're getting ready to uh, lift the wreckage up. The yellow panels were the uh, sunscreen that uh, went up over the, uh, the monorail cars. Here's a set of the, uh, the tires. As I mentioned last week, I looked at the tires pretty carefully and I don't see any blowouts on these, not that they couldn't have been on some other tire and not shown, but uh, I imagine that uh, they were all very carefully uh, examined. So the crane is getting here ready to lift it up. This unfortunately is right where it came down. You can see how it absolutely crushed all the plants and everything and uh, the water that the, the, the poor woman got dropped into. Big crowds of people watching and everything going around. Sad remembrance of what happened the day. And just how mangled this thing was getting ready to pick it back up and take it out of there. So I think, okay, I wanted to make sure I got those. Let me just, I don't wanna end on a sad note. So let me see if I can just uh, pull up some other pictures. Uh, let's see, um, let's go back to uh, another look around. This is gonna be real early in the, the area. This is May 27th, 1968. So the, uh, everything's brand new, sparkling, uh, fresh, and we'll take a look going around. So there's the arena in the background. I don't have the names of some of the sculptures, but it was a nice day to be there. Attendance is sort of down, the sky looks nice and bright. Uh, things are uh, fresh and clean. Uh, boats all outside of Canada. You can see some jet skis, canoes, pontoon boats. They were making a big fact that Water was an important life of, in Canada. And there's the stage in the, the back for the Mexican mariachi band. The walkways were great. I got a kick out of this one. I was trying to figure out again, you know, who builds these things the lowest bidder. This is May. It hasn't been open very long at all. And look how the walkway, the covering surface has already been, uh, you know, scraped away and everything in some spots. So uh, you wonder if it got fixed during time. But nice views of the, the fountain areas, uh, the gardens. Uh, they had put a nice uh, number of benches in that people could come and relax and just enjoy themselves outside. Uh, take your food from some of the food areas, walk around, relax, and enjoy the site. Just off to the very left end, we're on Fiesta Island. So you can see the uh, Ferris wheel just off to the left here. Again, mentioned the walkways made double use of the space. You can see one of the glass enclosed buildings and a, a carnival game down below underneath the, the walkway. Lots going on, different rides. We're over to the Frito-Lay area. They're not doing their show yet. You have to come back. We're gonna be back at 5 p.m. for this, this particular one. I don't think I'd like that Ferris wheel because I don't like things that turn upside down and you can see the cars there go upside down at the top of the Ferris wheel. But nice, nice day, light crowds. It would have been the perfect sort of time to be there. The lagoon where they did the water boat show had the uh, uh, track around the edge of it for the canal boats to, to go around. Lots of colorful banners and everything to uh, give the eyes something to, to look at. And our GE Pavilion. Here is one of the ends of the monorail system. The, uh, the you could get, get on uh, here and take your ride around it. The Kino Automat Theater had been super popular up at uh, Expo '67. This was a uh, thing where you get to decide to vote. You can see the uh, motif off to the right hand side. Thumbs up. We want to see this. So the movie had numerous different branches in it and you would get to a, a particular part of the film and 
they would stop and say, okay, audience, do you want us to go in direction one, two, three, or four? If you would pick direction two, then they would, you know, show that particular part of the movie. But that in turn would end, and that might have, uh, you know, options A, B, C, and D. And if you pick D, now you go into another one. So there were numerous, numerous uh, variations on the film to be shown there. And that was clever in them because people would keep going back to try to see footage that they, uh, they hadn't seen before. Again, General Motors in the background there. Candy shop off to the uh, left and the steakhouse off to the left again. The Lone Star Hall of Texas history. We saw some of the interiors of that before. Down below the Pearl Pavilion. Another view of the Pearl. Come on inside and get out of the sun. This was kind of nice. It showed how they used water. Uh, you had these plants growing up and planters out of the water. The uh, boat going around. Again, the, uh, the Ferris wheel that I think I will pass on just off to the side there. But a great site. I mean, they really, really did their best for a very small site to uh, put an awful lot uh, into this. Bell system, the back side of it. You can see downtown San Antonio in the back. Kaleidoscope, when we were there, uh, Christopher showed us, you could still see the round outline of the building on the concrete, which was left, uh, left behind. And the dock for the Lagoon Cruise. Some of the international pavilions, uh, looks like on the outside, you had a caricature and sketch artist uh, under the red and white stripe, always popular, bring home a souvenir. Or let's go and visit some of the, the nations again, we don't have North or South Korea, uh, according to the, everybody at that time, it was just Korea, just like there was just Germany. Uh, you know, the world has the, changed a little bit or become a little bit more aware of that uh, there are North and South and things like that. So such a shame that this fountain didn't exist or didn't survive rather. Up in the top uh, area here uh, is a restaurant area. Uh, very interesting signage nailed to a tree to send you to Panama. And when you get there to Panama, again, we saw this in a slightly different angle before, but enough, I think, to draw you inside and make you, you want to come and see it. Some more of the international shops off in the distance. And I think I will do one last batch of them just so we uh, do justice to it here. Again, we're going to uh, stay in May and we're going to, uh, let's, let's see here. I'll go to May 24th, 1968. Again, great signage, you know, uh, on this particular building here, it's called the Late Pavilion. I uh, had a whole bunch of different things in it, but Big signs here, all you can eat buffet, very appealing. And you can come in here, the Bavarian beer garden. So lots of food opportunities besides out under the giant tent that we saw. I thought this was a really outstanding shot. Somebody captured the mini monorail just uh, going down. Really, just to me, I thought this was very, very nicely framed. And a very empty day. So it was a great day to come and get pictures of the pavilions because things are not all scattered around uh, or jammed up with people. One of the information booths, there were several of them scattered around the site with hostesses that would give you information of what, where things were located, uh, where you could get a hotel if you needed it, what time the next show was at a particular pavilion. And again, Mexico uh, off to the right, the boats from Canada off to the left. French restaurant. So not everything was uh, burgers and steaks and chili and corn dogs and everything. You could come and get a nice meal inside this French restaurant here. End of the Skyway system and the mini monorail off to the, the background. The camera on fountain again, Spain in the background. Magic of people.
And again, bright colors. This one always reminded me of the Venezuela Pavilion at uh, Expo 67, uh, colored you know, sides of the big square type buildings. Restaurant Rendezvous. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. I've mentioned this fellow uh, in the past. He had a, a restaurant at uh, all sorts of world's fairs. And what his particular thing was, he sold French onion soup. And uh, he was, had a restaurant at Expo 67. He had a for 68. He shows up again in Knoxville. I mean, all over the place. And this guy's whole particular claim was he had a very great recipe for French onion soup. And he had, I think he ended up at about seven, maybe eight consecutive World's Fairs with restaurants selling French onion soup. So uh, kind of an interesting way that he did it. In the carnival areas, the octopus ride back here on Fiesta Island, rotator rides that would spin you around and get you sick down below, lagoon cruise going around. Oh, in the background here, if you look real closely uh, where my mouse should be moving around, if you see it, you could get your feet, uh, what you call it, uh, vibrated and uh, relaxed. Those showed up at a number of fairs. So again, big open walkways. Here is a food area off to the left. Uh, they could have, again, in this particular area, to my thought, maybe put some more benches. But again, they wanted this to be an area to get people from point A to point B very quickly on the site. Lots going on, Fiesta area. And we're just going to hop around for a couple last views. They did have some nice greenery and landscaping, so not everything was concrete walkways. Well, this is going over to a uh, golf. Uh, you had your uh, uh, car ride that you went around, and they kind of made them look uh, like uh, little sports cars, uh, not uh, antique cars like we'd seen it other fairs, but now we're in the cutting edge, the space age and everything. So let's get into a uh, cutting edge car and go zipping around. And if you could go around it, you get yourself a nice little postcard showing that you were a, a new driver, which was uh, great. We got a real kick out of this one for us Disney fans. The Disney characters were there at the uh, park and they were here a part of Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. And why was that? Well, it's because it's sponsored by golf dealers. So it's synergy at, at work. So you could drive around. You didn't have Mickey and Minnie walking around uh, the uh, hemisphere grounds, but along the route here, you had Disney characters scattered around the, uh, the driving uh, section. Pearl Pavilion again. And again, oh, salad. How did salad get into a picture of Texas? Oh my God, they were cutting edge back then. But we could get all sorts of French fries, fried chicken, hot dogs in the background, chocolate roll and hamburgers. And if you look at these pictures of the food courts, they are always busy. So I'm making fun of the food. This is exactly as my wife knows, the sort of stuff I would be going drawn to like a, a, a bead of honey. I'd be running to the jumbo hot dog line or the hamburger line myself. She's the healthy eater in the family. But uh, there was a lot of food uh, opportunity at Hemisphere and people are having a good time enjoying it. Ancient sign for Coca-Cola, your trust, you trust its quality. Artwork out on the site. Bar they had for Dr. Pepper. What? Oh, crepes. Oh, I can say some good food. And in the background, Orange Julius. It's it's coming up on lunchtime in here in LA, and I'm I'm torturing myself with this stuff. So with that, I will stop share. And I will pop up here to see what people have put in chats. I invite you to uh, uh, any comments. And uh, again, Christopher can tell you all the things I got wrong in this. So let's see. Oh, Carlos had mentioned I see flags at half mast. And then uh, Christopher mentioned uh, that particular one that uh, uh, it was Bobby Kennedy was shot the day after. Uh, yeah, most of the hostess uniforms are 100% polyester, not the coolest material to be wearing. It's the same thing that bedeviled uh, folks when they opened Disney World. Polyester is wonderful for a design point of view, wonderful for a uh, uh, cleaning and longevity point of view, and not really so great to be wearing it. So, uh, you know, the, the, they, I think they need to make the people that design some of these things to uh, uh, actually wear them at times.
So Alive was the atheist pavilion. And, uh, there was actually an atheist pavilion. That's interesting. Wow, I didn't know that. Texas and Arkansas are the only two US states to exhibit. Magic of People exhibited dioramas created by uh, Alexander Gerard on Latin American folk art. Okay, thank you. And the railings to the elevated walkway system designed to serve as seating. That would scare me on some of those. So put up a kid and you know, uh, have them go tumbling off to the side on, on that particular thing. So uh, anybody here actually make it to Hemisphere 68 during the time of its run? Randy, why don't you share your memories of it? Well, I, th I think I mentioned it last week. I was, it was the first World Fair that I attended. Um, I remember I'd never been in a hot, humid climate before. And that was a shock. I had no idea what hot, humid weather was. And boy, was it humid. We were there probably in late August, I think. So that was kind of a shock. Um, you know, I just have a general memory. The, the grounds were quite nice, very well designed, uh, great graphic arts. Like you mentioned, the hostess uh, uniforms, very uh, up to the minute, uh, pop art, op art, that kind of stuff. Uh, don't remember any, well, I do remember some of the industrial exhibits. Uh, for IBM, I think it was the first time I'd used a selector typewriter. Um, U.S. Pavilion was great. And uh, yeah, that's, that's probably about it. it uh, it's, uh, City of San Antonio was quite beautiful. The canal, uh, that area, very nice. And you know, I think it's even nicer now. I've been there for quite a while, but I think they've done some, a lot of renovations to that area. A lot of nice uh, restaurants and all. But that's probably about it. Uh, you know, the Alexander Gerard stuff. Um, Alexander Gerard did a lot of work for Braniff uh, Airlines, you know, been defunct for quite a while. A lot of their, um, some of their signage, some of their, um, like at their hostess college, they had a lot of artwork that was his. Uh, his, his uh, I guess he was very well known in the Southwest, you know, the bright colors and uh, very eye-catching designs. So one of the things that struck me about uh, all the pictures I've looked at uh, Hemisphere was how clean and well-maintained the grounds were. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen pictures of many other World's Fairs, particularly as they started running the money troubles and the Hemisphere did have its money troubles, but they started letting, you know, things like the trash build up or the, uh, the grounds not being kept. I mentioned that one area where the walkway, the uh, covering looks pretty well scraped off. But even at the end of this, uh, you know, I, I don't see pictures of the, uh, the site looking in any sort of disarray. I mean, right down to the very end, it looks like they did a nice job maintaining it. And that, that kind of, I thought, was a nice uh, effort by the people that ran it to, uh, you know, to keep up appearances right, right to the end. So uh, it looked like it was a, uh, you know, a, uh, a well-designed thing as far as guest movement and flow, that sort of thing. But also that, you know, one of the things I also noticed that if you look at like the 64 World's Fair, you can see all the pictures of dumpsters outside of pavilions because they, you know, we take their trash, dump it out there. I don't see any pictures of dumpsters or stuff like that in this particular one. So how they picked up, moved the trash around probably all at night, but where it went and generated during the day, I think they had planned out a lot of that, a lot more for eye appeal. So it, like I said, to me, it's good eye candy. Have you, uh, anybody else um, thoughts, memories, questions that uh, they might have, uh, things about Hemisphere? Uh, Christopher said the cars were on the outside of Ford because inside was a movie theater, the wide world of Ford. Inside, they also had the uh, Auto Parts uh, Harmonic Orchestra uh, from the 64 World's Fair, but it was called uh, the Car Parts Band uh, for, for Hemisphere, then done in, in very bright and gaudy colors. So in New York, you give an orchestra. In Texas, uh, you don't have an orchestra. We're going to throw in a band in. So they, they changed a few things for that. Um, but 
it's uh they did a nice job and uh you know repurposing some of the stuff and like i said they moved their quadricycle and uh, some other things uh for it uh nobody knows what happens after hemisphere uh what ended up happening is the car parts band of the uh auto harmonic orchestra or whatever variation you want to call it <clears throat> somewhere it went somewhere or broken apart <clears throat> excuse me but uh, that was the last we saw of it um so yeah, I saw again, people had talked for a number of weeks or months that they wanted to see some of Hemisphere. So for two weeks in a row, we took a, a trip back down uh, and you have to, we got to do it without the humidity, right? So yeah. yep. you know, for all the people back East now, they're up to 14 inches of snow or something that they, uh, they, they, they probably, uh, uh, you know, didn't want to have, uh, you know, you'd, you'd probably trade your snow for the humidity. Yes. Oh, okay. Tom Brooks is saying it's a good thing for the legal beagles for LDS Church. Uh, they are no longer Mormons. They are Latter Day Saints. So, but it uh, on the pavilion on the wall it said the Mormon pavilion. So we we can still talk about it. I think in that that particular structure. But yeah, with their with the way lawyers are, they'll they'll come and change change all that. Well, appreciate folks joining. Next week we have uh, Rob Bianco, and we talked a little bit about uh, uh, last week. But Rob. Uh, if you've seen his models, of, uh, he's holding two of them in his picture here, uh, the Unisphere and the Trilon and Perisphere. Rob has done some uh, absolutely wonderful model making work. I, I hope you got a kick out of the pictures of the hemisphere models, Rob, uh, you know, seeing what other model makers are, are, have done. Oh, and Kenneth's picture in the background, we can, uh, if Kenneth sneaks out of the way for a second, you can see some of Rob's outstanding work back there, the Ford Pavilion and GE. So uh, Rob will be with, this, with us uh, next week. And Rob, I do need to get together with you to work out the details. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, it was an absolutely crazy schedule week uh, th this past week. But I, I'll get together with you and we'll get things set. So uh, look forward to it next week. I hope uh, people, oh, you know, it's, it's really funny. Think about the snow, reading everybody's comments or everything. There was some guy that said, a lot of people are probably not familiar with how to uh, shovel snow properly and safely. So I'll be conducting a class in my driveway this Saturday morning, starting at 6 a.m. So, <laughs> so all I can think was the modern modern version of uh, uh, Tom Sawyer. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'll show you how. No, no, pick up the shovel. You got to do it a little faster, a little more energetic. So I got a real kick out of it. I don't know if he actually got anybody to come to his house, but you got to uh, got to appreciate American ingenuity. So wish folks well, and we'll see you next week for a uh, talk. And I really encourage you to come. And uh, again, the model work is uh, just astonishing that uh, uh, he does. And I'm, I'm going to be very much in awe myself of watching. The, the details are amazing. How do you put these itty bitty little things together and uh, they, they survive is, is just been fun. So I hope everybody has a great week. And we'll see you again uh, next week. Thanks, Bill. Great job. Thank right. you. Take care. Bye. Bye.